This may be a little early, but we're going to talk about winter and I'm going to give you my 2025-2026 winter forecast. There are a lot of things to take into account when doing a winter forecast or outlook this far in advance. Our ENSO forecast is a great place to start. NOAA or the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration does expect us to stay between an ENSO neutral and weak La Nina phase. Taking a look at what's been happening with our ocean temperatures lately, I'm more on the side of weak La Nina. I do think we'll be in that phase from December through February. Keeping that in mind, let's take a look at some of the temperature and precipitation trends that we typically see from a weak La Nina. Our northern tier states are typically well below average during a weak La Nina. And many times our southern states, especially in the southeast, see a more mild winter temperature wise. We usually see average to slightly above average precipitation up in those northern tier states as well in a weak La Nina. And our southern states can struggle to get precipitation. You can see especially the southeast and then up towards the mid-Atlantic. Now this is an end-all be-all. There's plenty of La Ninas and there's plenty of El Ninos that don't follow their historical trend, so we need to look at a little bit more. I do quickly want to show you NOAA's precipitation and temperature outlook for this winter. Temperature-wise, they do expect much of the country to remain average to slightly above average, except for down here through portions of the southern plains and potentially the southwest. And precipitation-wise, I'm actually not shocked to see this at all. They are expecting much of the south to stay drier, and they do think we could see above-average precipitation around the Great Lakes, up in the Pacific Northwest, northern Rockies, and potentially northern plains. This next graph, I think, is very interesting. This graph right here shows North America's yearly snowfall departure starting all the way back from 1966. The one thing I definitely wanted to point out on this map was every time we have a big dip in snowfall, it typically recovers very fast. You can see that here. You can see that here. This is the only stretch that didn't really immediately recover. As we move closer to the present, you can see every time we have a large departure from snow, it typically recovers very fast. And currently we are in another one of those dips. Planet Earth has a good way of trying to get back to equilibrium. It likes to correct itself. So logic would say in looking at these trends, I do expect this departure from snow fall to correct itself. What we're looking at right here is sea surface temperature anomalies because the temperatures of our ocean play a big role in our weather. So I wanted to pull up some analogs and find previous years that had a similar sea surface temperature setup to what we have now. One of the first ones I noticed was 2014. You can see the transition into that weak La Nina in both of these years. The MPO is also similar. We have some very warm temperature anomalies up here in the North Pacific. So we're going to use the climate reanalyzer and take a look at what was happening back in the winter of 2014. What was our temperature anomaly? and what were our precipitation anomalies. Temperature-wise, it was very cold across much of the U.S., especially up here in the Great Lake region and upper Midwest. But as you can see in classic La Nina fashion, the southeast stayed quite warm and so did the southwest and up the coast. Now, precipitation-wise, this is also classic to see in a La Nina. You can see down here in the southern plains out towards the southwest, we had dry conditions. Although the eastern seaboard, including the southeast, actually saw some pretty good precipitation that year. Also notice that precipitation was slightly above average in the Great Lake region and upper Midwest, but it was very below average average in the Pacific Northwest, which actually isn't that typical of a La Nina year. Another year I wanted to compare this to was the 2019 winter season, where we also had a very warm northern Pacific, and you can see our temperatures were cooling down near Enzo 3 and 4. Now in 2019, the south and the east were hot, and portions of the northern Rockies, northern plains, and upper Midwest stayed average to below average, while we had a mix out west. Precipitation-wise, almost the entire country was average to above average, except the Pacific Northwest. The next thing I wanted to show you guys was the seasonal CFS outlook. This is another thing that I'm not surprised to see warmer temperatures down here in the south, and then well below average temperatures for our northern tier states. That's a La Nina look. And this model is predicting drier conditions down in the south and up towards the Pacific Northwest, while portions of the Midwest and Great Lakes region experience above average precipitation and areas in the Northeast. We're also looking at a good amount of sea ice in the Arctic just to the north of North America. This matters because the more ice that builds up here, the easier it is for cold air to be transferred down and into North America. Going back to our CFS model, what we're looking at here is our monthly MSLP P anomaly or mean sea level pressure anomaly. And it is showing major blocking in November up to our north. This is what we would call a negative AO or negative Arctic oscillation. And that is when the pressure is much higher up over the Arctic region. And that can destabilize the polar vortex forcing a lot of Arctic air down to the south. Now, this would be an extremely negative AO. Our Canadian model also shows some of this blocking up to the north, just not as drastically as our CFS model. But they do both suggest some potential polar vortex outbreaks this winter. In the beginning of the video, I did talk about how I thought we would be in more of a weak La Nina, even though the Enzo forecast said that we may be more Enzo neutral, although that was an older Enzo forecast. What we're looking at right here is our Nino 3 and 4 index, and you can see 
Technically, this is moving down towards a moderate La Nina, although I do think it'll likely stabilize around weak. But if this did push down to moderate and stay in moderate, that could change a lot of people's winter forecasts. But honestly, when you're doing a forecast or outlook this far in advance, it's tough. So what is my way too early prediction for this winter? Let's get to it. Here we go. And you probably already saw this in the thumbnail, but let's talk about it. There were some analogs that did show a lot of precipitation up here in the Pacific Northwest, although more of them point it towards a drier winter. I know I showed you guys the 24 14 and 2019 analog, although I did go back and look at a lot more before I made this video. So that's what I think for the Northwest and specifically really the Pacific Northwest. Dry and mild for the South. I don't think this should surprise anyone. This is very classic La Nina and a lot of the analogs did point towards this as well. Average snow for much of the Rockies and portions of the Central Plains. Again, this is a tough area to call. It really goes back and forth every year when we have this type of setup. So we're settling on average snow. I do think the temperatures may be a little bit warmer than normal this winter though. This is probably a little bit of a surprise, but I do expect above average snow through portions of the mid-atlantic ohio valley and then pushing down a little bit south towards the northern or northwestern southeast as well philly may finally have a good winter large snowstorms up in new england are classic during a weak and moderate la nina and most of the analogs support that as well this may be where i have my most confidence and i hate saying that because if this doesn't happen people are going to come back here in six or seven months and say i was completely wrong and i'll just have to accept it but i do think with this climate pattern that we're moving into we are going to have some very very cold air up here in portions of of the upper Midwest and Northern Plains. If I had to put money on it, I think we could have a couple of long cold streaks up here as well. Not just an Arctic outbreak that pushes in and then warm air immediately replaces it. No, I think we could have these one, two, three week long cold spells up here where that well below average air just stalls out. Now remember, it's the middle of August. No one knows what's gonna happen this winter, but we can go back and look at the analogs and we can use all of this data and try to give you our best guess. I love winter, I'm excited for it. And I did try to spend as much time as I could putting this together because I want this to be right, obviously. The odds that this is a perfect forecast for winter are basically zero, but there was a lot of thought and time put into this, and I do think some of this will come together. And remember, there's plenty of time for this to change. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, feel free to throw me a follow or sub. I make posts like this every day, and I stream every day as well to try and answer all of your questions. I'll see you in the next video.